Hey there, welcome to my latest tutorial. This time we're going to be taking a look at making a noise percussion. Have a listen to this. Right, so there's two types of uh, that I like to categorize a noise percussion by. One of them is supportive, meaning that it adds to an already existing sound within your mix, and the other one is where the noise percussion itself stands out. Today we're going to be making something that stands out more than it supports, uh, but it can depend on how you mix it in at the end. So. Uh, because it's a synthesizer, there's a lot of possibilities with how you want it to sound like and you're welcome to adjust it uh, any time during the video or during the time that you are trying to copy this. Now, I want you to take home the concepts as opposed to the technicalities, but if you do have access to a Zebra 2 or a Dark Zebra synthesizer, you're welcome to copy what I'm doing and see if you can make it sound like mine. So, to start this off, uh, I'm going to start out with just a noise generator. And uh, before I do anything to the sound itself, I'm going to go to the arpeggiator. And you're welcome to do it in your synthesizer as well. And find a pattern that you like the sound of. I find that depending on what rhythm you're using, uh, the type of sound can greatly change. This is what I have so far. Right, so it's nothing special right now, but uh, give it a bit of time, a bit of tinkering, and I'm gonna see what I can do with this. So right now I've changed to pink noise instead of white noise. The reason for that is because pink noise has a lot more low end to it, whereas white noise has a lot more high end to it. So if you're looking for accenting different notes or different rhythms, then uh, white noise is perfectly fine for that, or to make uh, clock-like sounds, metronomes, that sort of thing. But pink noise is more of what I tend to use when I want uh, an oomph to the percussion. I want a lot more bass to it. I want it to sound like it's, it's something that could belong in a movie, uh, so to speak, or in an orchestra. That's not to say that they have to be mixed in with those kinds of genres, but it's a good starting point for you to imagine what type of sounds you can make with these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to stereo and I'm going to increase the width as much as possible. Not to 100, but again, depends on what you like the sound of. And it should sound something like this. So now that we've got this, uh, what I'm going to do is... Um, this can be dependent on what synthesizer you're using. In Zebra, I'm going to turn down the low pass filter that is within the noise generator, and I'm going to use an envelope that I can control myself much more than a traditional envelope, and use it so that the envelope opens up uh, with as short of an attack as possible, no sustain, and a short release. And so it should sound something like this. we're going to do after that is we're going to increase the release time of the envelope that controls the noise generator. Uh, I'm going to bring down the sustain because it's a percussive sound. I don't want it to have any sustain at all. Sometimes there's a bit of tinkering that you can do where you do have a bit of sustain, but I'm not going to have any now. So you can hear that it turned into a much more percussive sound, almost as if someone's hitting a kind of surface or a drum kit. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the same with another noise generator. And I'm going to do that, not exactly, a slightly bit different compared to the other one. And I'm going to use the same envelope for this as well. But as you can see, this one is a white noise. So this is what white noise would sound like on its own. And this is with pink noise. So there's a lot more high end to the sound. If you want it to be supportive, maybe don't have the white noise there, but because I want this to stand on its own, uh, or be able to stand on its own, I'm going to include the white noise, but I'm going to turn it down just a slight bit. Right, so on the spectrum analyzer, this is what it should look like. As you can see, the more that I lower the volume, uh, the less high end content there is. So 
So that is about right, I find. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to introduce a filter at the end of this. So I shape some of the attack via the low pass filters built within the noise generator. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce another filter on the end of that. Uh, you might be able to do this in separate instances if you can't do it in the same one within your synthesizer, but thankfully you can do that in Zebra. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to turn down the cutoff I'm going to use another envelope. So the reason why I'm using an MSEG2 instead of an envelope is because the MSEG2 is a bit more visual. So you should be able to see what the envelope uh, is doing more so than if I was to just change some of the dials on a traditional envelope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with my first envelope that was controlling the low pass filters, previous low pass filters. And it should sound something like this. So there's a bit of a ping to that that I don't particularly like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the amount that the MSEG, meaning the envelope that I'm using here, uh, can affect the filter. Now let's see, I'm not overly convinced with the white noise being as loud as it is. So let's see how that sounds like. I'm going to just tinker with the envelope, see if I can find something that I like the sound of. So far, that sounds fine. Uh, let's see. So the next thing that I'm going to be doing is there is a reason why I don't have every note playing in the arpeggiator. Sometimes you might be able to find that if you take out certain notes and then introduce them within a delay, it sounds a bit more interesting. Let's see if I can find a pattern that I like the sound of. Right, so that seems about right. So this is what it sounds like without the delay. This is what it sounds like with the delay. And because I don't want the delay to be taking up too much of the spectrum, I'm going to high pass it just a little because I don't want too much bass content within this sort of a sound. I don't want this percussion, specifically synth percussion, to step on the kick drum and the bass guitar. Sometimes you might be able to get away with it, but in this case, I'm just gonna show you straightforward, uh, clean sounding percussion. So I'm gonna try and take out some of the low end. I'm gonna leave the high end for now. So that seems about right. Now, to make this a little more interesting, what Zebra also allows me to do is to have an LFO control the amount that a, an envelope uh, controls the filter here. So what that means is what the LFO is doing is it's reducing and increasing the amount that this MSEG2, which is what is currently controlling the filter, is doing. So I'm going to show you an extreme version of that and I'm going to speed up the rate so it's a bit easier for you to hear. I'm going to use triangle instead of a sign shape to it and let's see what that sounds like. So as you can see this is a bit too much right now. What I want is slight variations within the sound to make it a little more interesting. That's how a lot of synth sounds should be made is they should be changing ever so slightly. What I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be introducing some distortion to it uh, because a lot of time if I want an aggressive sounding percussion distortion can go a long way. What 
what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be introducing a flanger and a phaser to the sound. Again, I'm trying to emphasize that the sound should be changing a little bit and that's just going to make it more interesting on the long run. So let me turn off the flanger. I'm just going to focus on the phaser. I'm going to try and find something or some kind of movement that I like and I'm going to dial back the mix so that it's not taking over the whole sound but just uh, uh, changing it ever so slightly. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the flanger. So this is what it sounds like. And this is without. Now, it might be that you like the sound of the percussion without all this, uh, and that's completely fine, but for now we're going to be doing this. Right, so what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to put in a compressor, uh, just to even things out a little bit, but not so that it steps on the transients, meaning the attack of the sound. Next, I'm going to introduce some more distortion to it. After that, what I'm also going to do is introduce another compressor, just to smooth things out even more. Now again, you don't need to use all these. If you like the sound of it before, that's completely fine. Right, let me just explain to you quickly what I'm doing before I show you what it sounds like. Instead of doing a normal stereo compression, uh, this plugin allows me to do mid-side compression. I'm not going to go into detail how that works, but know that bass goes to the center, everything else to the sides. This compressor allows me to compress those for the purposes of the explanation. Let me just call it signals. So the mid signal and the side signal are split into two in this compressor. And what I'm doing is I'm compressing the sides more than the mids. Let me just show you how that sounds like with and without the compressor. So this is without. And this is with the compressor. Now one thing to also note is that it is a bit louder because I can't make the output of this compressor any lower than it is now. Uh, that's just the way that it was designed. Uh, so what you also want to be doing whenever you're changing sounds this way is to loudness match. You don't want the outcoming signal to be louder than the incoming signal because one way to trick your ears is to play something loud compared to something quiet. Automatically you're always going to say that the loud is better than the quiet one. And then what I'm going to do is to just show you a couple of variances with the way that something like this can sound. Even via the small changes of an equalizer, sound can drastically change. And let me just add all the bass back in so you can hear what that sounds like. What I could also do is I could actually boost the bass and I could lower the highs and this is how that sounds like. So I don't know if you can hear it on your system but the bass here is a bit too much. Something like this would muddy up the mix greatly so you want to stay away from something like this. What you could maybe do is not boost the bass this much and not take off the high end this much and let's see how that sounds like. So there's more to the sound now as opposed to this which was previously. Something like this could fit very well within a metal mix or something like this. You would need to watch out uh, so that you don't step on the kick drum and the bass guitar, but mainly the kick drum. So this is it. Uh, this was just a short tutorial. Uh, again, I want you to take away the concepts, not the specifics of it. So first of all, noise generation, going through filters, distortion, equalization, and maybe some effects can greatly impact the way that your song sounds. It can help it, but it can also take away from it if you don't watch the spectrum that you're taking up with it. So to revise some of the things that I have gone through in this video, you can make two different types of sounds. One is supportive, which enhances certain sounds within your music, such as a kick drum, a snare, the hi-hats, that sort of thing. Or you can make a noise percussion, which stands out. The main difference between the two is the amount of frequencies or spectrum range that they're taking up. The more supportive a sound is, the more you need to go into the equalizer and take out sections of it. Right, so what I want you to do next, if you really want to learn how to do these things, because they're not very difficult, they're rather simple, is to focus on the patterns that you're making with it. Maybe try and combine something like this with a guitar distortion. Maybe introduce some reverb to the sound to make it a bit more distant sounding, or 
maybe bigger, if that is a way that you would describe it. But that is pretty much it. Thank you for watching.